Hi everybody, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. Today we're going to be learning about Washington tree fruit and specifically, and one of my favorites, pie. We'll meet with Kimmy Tomlinson of Shoe Fly Pie to learn how they're using local ingredients to bake up a variety of handmade pies. Kelsey's off to Wenatchee to meet with Kyle Matheson of Stemilt Orchards. We'll get a tour of their world famous cherry orchard and see how they're shipping their fruit across the globe. Then Kelsey's on the streets of Seattle to see what kind of pies people are dishing up. I'll sit down with Governor Jay Inslee to discuss Washington's agricultural industry. I'm at Cyrus O'Leary's Pie Factory to see how they've been creating delicious, high quality pies for over 30 years. Then we're in the kitchen with our home chef, Kristen. Today we're making deconstructed apple pie. It's a simple way to make an apple pie in less than 30 minutes using your favorite local apples. All this and much more on Washington Grown. Okay. For whole wheat, this is pretty awesome. They are so delicious. <laughs> Today we're here in Seattle, Washington at Shoe Fly Pies, and I'll talk with baker Kimmy Tomlinson, maybe even get to try some of their award-winning pie. Let's head on in. So Kimmy, what kind of pies are people going to find when they come to Shoe Fly Pie? There's so many here. There are. We, we try to make anything in a crust, that's what we call it. So we have cream pies and berry pies, but we also make savory items like quiches and pot pies. And sometimes we try to jazz it up by making uh, strawberry balsamic raspberry pie. I mean, so we try to yeah. mix things up. So how important is using local ingredients to create the perfect shoe fly pie? What we want to do is support local businesses and we try to do that whenever we can. So our butters, dairy gold butter, our flour, shepherd's grain flour, our apples that we're going to make the pie with are from Washington. So we try yes. whatever we can. So why should people eat shoe fly pie? What makes the pies here so special? Well, they're all made with love, but also um, we use an all butter crust. Everything you get is handmade. We don't use any preservatives. They're all natural. So how many pies do you turn out in a day? Well, it varies. You know, for Thanksgiving in one day, we'll do five or 600 pies. Wow. On a weekend, we might do 100, and then on a weekday, maybe 60, something like that. Lots to choose Lots from. Lots to choose That's from. We try. Pie. Yeah. Oh my goodness, okay. Coming up later in the show, we'll learn how to make a shoe fly favorite, apple cranberry crumble pie. And I might get to try some myself. Hey guys, it's Kelsey Cook, and I'm in Wenatchee, Washington, touring Stemilt Orchards with owner Kyle Matheson. We're in the Stemilt world famous cherry orchard up on the top of Stemilt Hill, known as the Amigos. The reason it's called the Amigos is because the only way that it's possible to have this beautiful orchard is to have a lot of friends, and most of my friends are Hispanic, <laughs> and, they, and they do a great job for me. Stemilt has famously been growing fruit in central Washington for almost a hundred years and is currently the largest distributor of fresh cherries in the world. Well, I have to say it all started in 1893 when my great-grandfather homesteaded here on Stemilt Hill. Around 1910, the railroad came through town. Uh, so he planted cherries. He knew he could get his product to the market once the railroad came in. Then the third generation, my dad, he went to World War II and he came back and him and my grandma were farming together. My dad passed away and I'm so blessed to have two sons to take over my dad's job. We just, my boys and I, trying to scratch a living, you know, growing these cherries. These are called skinas and we're harvesting these and they're normally a large, big cherry and we have a, 
A lot of people working with this. Around 600 cherry pickers harvest the orchards each day, many of whom return year after year to harvest these world famous cherries. Yeah, I think the quality this year is exceptional, especially here in the late part of the season. Jorge works all year trying to grow these beautiful cherries. These cherries are actually Jorge's children. <laughs> and like everybody, you want your children to succeed. You want them to, to be able to go places. We want these cherries to go to China, Australia, Japan. Just like your children, you want the best for them. The way you do it, Kelsey, is you take each cherry and you lift it up okay. and put it in the bucket by the stem. Okay. Here. Holy moly, okay. You want to kind of come over here and see if you can do it? Oh, I don't know if it. Look at that. Look how big that is. It's like an eyeball. <laughs> That's incredible. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen them grow so densely. You know? Oh, I, I just, one bunch. it's not that often you see a bunch like that. When I grow those cherries, I want when a person eats that cherry, it just explodes with flavor. Is it good? So good. Oh. I'm gonna get sick if you keep me here too long because I'm gonna keep eating them. <laughs> mm. You bite into it, you get that crunch. And look inside that meat. It's just like black. That's amazing. Isn't that? And did you guys hear when he bit that uh, sound of just how like uh, crisp and mm. amazing every part of the cherry is not mushy or anything. It's perfect all the way around. Now we just have to figure out how to grow them without seeds because <laughs> every morning I tell my crew, it's not a destination, it's a journey. Every day we're gonna get up and try harder to be world famous. That's what we're all about. It's the journey. To learn more about what it's like to be a farmer in Washington, go to our website at wagrown.com. I've decided to hit the streets to find out what pies are everyone's favorite. What is your favorite kind of pie? Ooh, favorite kind of pie. Mm, hard questions. <laughs> My favorite kind of pie is definitely pecan. I'm gonna have to go with the classic. I'm gonna go apple. Apple pie? Apple, apple pie. pie kinda guy? Peach. Peach pie? Yeah. Okay. It's gotta have a gluten-free crust and it's okay. pumpkin. I'd say strawberry rhubarb. Okay. Sweet pie would be French silk. Um, well, I have a gluten and dairy allergy, so oh, whatever wow. they make okay. in that. <laughs> Whatever's we'll left have. after you eliminate yeah. those ones. <laughs> okay. Probably butterscotch cream. Coconut cream pie. It's amazing. It's like a butterscotch cream with meringue on top. Oh, that sounds incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try that. I like pumpkin pie. Oh, pie, I, I yeah. love pumpkin pie too. That's always yeah. a good one. Oh, I'm about to make it. Some, anything with rhubarb in it. Marionberry. Pumpkin pie. Pecan. Cherry. Cherry, okay. Mm -hmm. And why cherry? You like a fruit guy, fruit pie guy? Because it's sweet and delicious. Are you guys like all a mode people? Ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah. Vanilla ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, who's gonna say no to that one, really? Well, I, I like Are you? whipped cream. Like, oh, whipped cream, okay. Up next, we're back at Shoe Fly Pie, where Kimmy's going to show us the secrets behind making the perfect home baked pie. We're back at Shoe Fly Pies in Seattle, Washington, and earlier we heard from Kimmy on the importance of choosing local. We all love pies, and it's tough to pick a favorite, so let's talk to some of the patrons and find out just what pies keep them coming back for more. It's my favorite. It is the chocolate cream pie uh, that I had today. Uh, the key lime, I think, was really my favorite. It was delicious. <laughs> I really like the, the Shoe Fly Pie, the name of the store. It's like. It tastes like a big molasses cookie. I'm back with Kimmy, and as promised, she's gonna show me how to make a pie, shoe fly style, so let's get to it. So Kimmy, what kind of pie are we gonna make today? We're gonna make one of our most popular pies in the fall, apple cranberry crumble pie. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna start with the crust. Yes, every good pie starts with the crust. So okay. we have um, some all-purpose flour, we've got some salt, and a little bit of sugar. Okay. And then this is the key. We have some butter. It's a lot of butter, two sticks of butter two that I cut into about tablespoon okay. sized pieces and, and it's, it's cold. It's cold. Why is that important? It's cold because it helps make the flake of the pie. So basically, if you can imagine when we work it down, we want to leave them in big enough pieces so that when it bakes in the oven, 
the melting makes of that little... butter is what makes the flakes. Oh, okay. So if you overwork it, that's why you won't get a flaky, a crust. flaky crust. Yeah, you okay. can follow. So cold butter. Cold butter. Next, we pinch the butter into the flour to achieve the desired flaky consistency. Once the butter is mixed in, we add the water and knead it all together. Possibly and you can feel it, it's more. kind of, oh, yeah. you know, fluffy, sure, but it definitely holds together. Yeah, you're right. Kimmy then places the dough in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes to rest. While we're waiting for our dough to rest or cool, we'll move on to the crumble topping. We have rolled oats. Rolled oats. We've got flour again. I'm just going to okay. add this to that. Great. We have some golden brown sugar okay. packed. And then this is salt, and we're just going to do a pinch do a of it. Pinch. Uh -huh. okay. And I will get it started for you. I'll oh, just okay. mix it up a little bit. Nice and gentle. And, is, and then does all of this butter go in there? It does. Nice. We do not scrimp on butter <laughs> here. <laughs> I continue to mix the ingredients by hand. I like this part. It's fun. <laughs> Kimmy then shows me a little trick to avoid split edges when rolling out the dough. When you roll, you shouldn't. You just stop right before the edge uh -huh. and turn, so that you're leaving the dough room to grow. Oh, if okay. That makes sense. Now flute and seal the crust by pinching the edges between your fingers. Next, we add the apples, lemon juice, cinnamon, and our sugar. And so apples will make a lot of juice. So in mm -hmm. our recipe, like right now it looks fine, but mm -hmm. everyone's had that apple pie where it's too much juice. Sure. So we let it um, macerate here for about okay. 15 minutes, and then the sugar, you know, the apples start to produce juice, and yeah. it won't. And then you can kind of decide how much juice you want to put in. And I'll show okay, you about that. Okay, that's a good idea. Now we layer our pie with cranberries and apples, adding layer after layer of each. Then we top it with a crumble until completely covered. So the pie that we made is ready to go in the oven, but we have one already made. Yeah. And how beautiful it looks. That is so gorgeous. And it's amazing to see it how. Totally, I told you, don't worry about the mound of apples. In fact, you need the mound of apples. You need to make the mound it. of apples yeah. to make it eventually look like this. Exactly. And, and it's a really pretty gorgeous. holiday pie. It's got it red is. in it. And, you know, it's one it's of my so favorites for the holiday. Gorgeous. For more information on this recipe and others, visit our website at wagrown.com. Okay, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Here's I get your to pie. See the and pie. I've, I've added a scoop of another local business, Old School Frozen Custard, which we serve at Alamo. Oh, of and course. That's and that's the best way to eat pie. Definitely. Right? That looks so good. Kimmy, thank you so much and for showing us how to make a good pie, and I can't wait to try yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure having you. I can't wait to eat this now. Give this a try. It is absolute heaven. Heaven right there. The apples and the cranberries are nice and tart, but you get the, the sweetness of the crumble on top. And the custard, the frozen custard, is actually an amazing addition. Coming up, I'm with Governor Jay Inslee to discuss the importance that Washington agriculture has on the state's economy. We're headed to Cyrus O'Leary's Pie Factory to see how they're able to produce more than 70,000 pies each week. Then we're in the kitchen with Kristen as she shows us how to make a deconstructed apple pie. In Olympia, Washington, talking with Governor Jay Inslee about how Washington's agricultural industry sets us apart from all the rest. Thank you for talking to me today. Thank you. Nothing yeah. better to talk about than I know. In, in Washington State. So it's a huge business for mm -hmm. Washington State. How big is it? Well, it's 160,000 people, $46 billion in sales. So it's a huge industry for our state. But it's also part of our culture and our identity and our, our aesthetic. Historically, we have been such a leader in agriculture uh, in the world, but our growth potential is just as rosy and, and promising as our past. And that's what I find very exciting. You know, our acreage is limited. We're not going to develop more acreage uh, in, our, in our state, except uh, when we bring on some additional water resources in the Yakima Valley. But the additional value that we're adding, the new types of crops, the new kind of apples that have been developed in the last several years to really add value to these products, 
that's what's really exciting about the state of Washington egg industry. Right. When you travel around, you know, across the nation and to other countries, what do people say about Washington agricultural products? Well, it's what they say is yum yum. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, just you know, you just can't beat Washington cherries, the soft wheat that, that we have, uh, potatoes. You name it, it's not just quantity, it's quality with Washington, and I think that's important in an increasingly uh, productive world. That's what you get when you come to Washington for our egg. Uh, our premium wines, which are winning awards uh, right, left, and center, our new variety uh, of apples. I think the important thing to understand about our egg industry is that we are uh, large uh, producers as far as quantity when you think of our potato production, but we're also very, very high quality on the upper end of the food scale. And people are starting to understand that. They're becoming, you know, foodies, you don't want to think as an elite term, but people are starting to understand the health benefits of fresh vegetables and fruit. And we're understanding how our health is directly tied to nutrition. And that emerging movement uh, is going to do well, uh, both for our health in the United States, but for our industry. Because if you want to eat healthy, eat Washington. And that's what we're, we're proud of. Yeah. With exports, uh, do you think that people outside of this country recognize the quality of Washington uh, You bet. Products? Washington is, is a brand. When our cherries get flown around uh, to Asia, people understand that. A Washington apple is a prize uh, in Asia. Our wines are, you know, first class. We'll be there for you and we'll be consistent. We've been a very reliable supplier and I think that's another thing that people appreciate about the Washington agricultural industry is that uh, our potatoes are there year after year. Our wheat is a steady supply. Uh, we are a good, high-quality producer, and we don't want to send you uh, second or third class products. We want to be first class products, and Washington agriculture has done that. We've been a very creative agricultural industry, so we haven't just sort of rested on our laurels. Every year, farmers and agronomists are producing new varieties. Uh, which are tastier and, and more wholesome and, and hardier. And so, so our research capability of growing new variety of apples, new ways to produce, new ways to store and transmit, we've always been on the cutting edge of, of agriculture. And that's really important to stay ahead of the, of the curve. And it's because of what we do really well in our state, which is, is to use technology, and we're doing that. Do you have some good memories of of uh, just family dinners or your favorite dishes or anything like that? You think about food, Washington food, and it is it just it's so ingrained in my memory of what it means to be a Washingtonian. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been around for five generations in this state. In every generation, the sound of a Washington apple, that crisp first bite of a Washington apple, that sound is one of the nicest Washington sounds that I can think of. So you're a husky, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a cougar. Right. So if we were to tailgate, what kind of food would we have? <laughs> uh, great food. Cougar Gold, of course, yes. which is some of the best cheese uh, in the world. And uh, Husky, we'll think about what Husky foods there. Uh, we'll, we'll go for some wines for some Husky food. There we go. And I know about that because I'm Drink away your sorrows exactly. because <laughs> in moderation. Win. In moderation. <laughs> but I know what that's like. I'm in a perfect marriage because we're in a marriage of a Husky and a Cougar. So Very good. We, we, we eat well and, and enjoy a Washington food. For more information on the economic impact that Washington agriculture has on our state, log on to our website at wagrone.com. Located just west of Spokane in Airway Heights is Cyrus O'Leary's Pie's Pie Making Headquarters. President Dennis Dippo was kind enough to show us around the factory and give us some insight into how their delicious pies are made and how Washington's local ingredients have allowed them to deliver a consistent product for over 30 years. What types of different fruit pies do you make here? We make apple, marionberry, cherry, peach, strawberry rhubarb, I think that's it. <laughs> Our first stop on the tour is where it all begins for America's favorite apple pie. We bring in fresh apples. They're sliced, peeled, and cored. You know, we bring them in a couple times a week. And uh, basically, he's just finishing cooking a batch of those apples. So we're going to see those poured off in the bin. And then once they're cooled down, they would be put into pies. Nice. It smells so good in here. It does. After touring the factory, I was amazed at what actually goes into an operation of this size and how using local ingredients are an important part of this process. Well, basically, we intentionally and deliberately try to buy local, and there are a couple of reasons for that. One, we feel like if we're dealing with local people, we're you know, helping out the community. And of course, it's easier to see, for example, with the fruit. 
you know, we can go and see it being packed. We can, you know, all of those types of things that really help out. And it's not just the fruit that's local. Lots of fresh ingredients, lots of local ingredients. You were saying the cream and the milk all comes from yes, Gary Gold? Yes, all, all local comes from Gary Gold and most of their farmers uh, are from Washington. First of all, just tell me how Cyrus O'Leary's got started. Well, uh, the Cyrus O'Leary's restaurant uh, was established like in the early 80s. And a few years after they opened, they were looking for a signature dessert. And so the owner, Cyrus Vaughn, hired a couple of guys from Kansas City, Missouri to come out here and make pies. And they started making just a few pies at a time in the back of the restaurant, and it grew from there. It's literally a company that's, that's grown from quality. So from making a couple of pies in the back of a restaurant to making how many pies now? 70 to 80,000 a week. Wow. <laughs> and it is just action in every corner it is. of this it place. It is. It's a, it's a beehive of activity. Yeah. And where exactly can we find a Cyrus O'Leary's pie? Well, the local chains, Yolks, um, Rosars, Super One, and Trading Company, as well as Albertsons and Safeway. And then you can also find uh, the pies in Albertsons and Safeway on the coast, as well as QFC, and uh, a lot of uh, independent markets as well. Good. Widely available. Like Widely that. available. <laughs> you can get your fix. Yes, you can. <laughs> to learn more about Washington grown food, go to our website at wagrown.com. All right, we're going to do some deconstructed apple pie, right, Kristen? <laughs> that is what we're doing. It sounds delicious. <laughs> it is, and it's also the easiest way to make an apple pie. Like, without all of the hours of work, sure. you can have an apple pie in less than 25 minutes. So, okay. we start by mixing flour, sugar, and salt in a food processor. And then we're gonna add our cold butter to it. We cut two sticks of cold butter into small chunks before adding to the flour mixture. And then we can just start sprinkling these cold butter chunks all along the top of it. Fresh dairy gold butter, because we like local. Do it. Makes it tastes that much better. It does. All right. Okay, our hands are a little buttery now. Yep. But we're gonna put the lid back on, and then we're just gonna turn it on for about 30 seconds. We're gonna watch it really closely. Mm -hmm. As soon as it starts to come together and look mm -hmm. like little crumbs, we're gonna stop. Okay. So we'll pulse it a little. Isn't this the easiest way to do it? Absolutely. <laughs> Instead of having to cut it. <laughs> you know, I grew up with my mom making with the yeah with the pastry the, cutter where you had to cut cutter. all of it in. Which and those are still useful. But they are, but this yeah, is so much faster because we're done. That's it. And that's it. The other way you do get an arm workout though. You did, right? <laughs> this one you can just do push-ups yeah, while you're doing exactly. <laughs> While the processor is running, we add in a quarter cup of cold water. And you'll hear it start to clump. Can you hear it yeah. getting a little lower? There we go. See? Okay. And then as soon as it comes together, I'm just gonna take it off the top and move it over here. We okay. have some saran wrap mm -hmm. already prepared. You don't wanna overwork your pie crust because when you work too much with it, that's what makes it stiff. Yeah. And this is enough for two pies, so we only need half of it. Okay. I'm gonna leave half of it in here. We can... Um, one for you and one for the rest of your family, <laughs> <Yes>. right? <laughs> we cover the dough with plastic wrap and roll it to the desired thickness. And then usually you chill your pie dough, but okay. today we're not going to. We're trying, we're going for fast with this right. dessert. So instead of leaving it to chill in the fridge for an hour, mm -hmm. we're just gonna stick it in the freezer for about 10 minutes while we start working on our apples, and then wow. we'll pop it in the oven. So we're gonna start peeling our apples. Okay. You wanna tag team with me? Sure. And we can just take all the peel off our apples. And then we're gonna slice them down mm -hmm. into about quarter inch pieces. Okay. Now, I like to use Granny Smith apples mm -hmm. on my apple pie. Different okay. people have different preferences. I like a tart apple. Yeah, so do I. Especially when I'm gonna be putting it with some nice, mm -hmm. sweet frozen yeah. custard, then I just want, I want that tart balance right. there. I'm just gonna continue peeling this apple for the next half an hour. How's that? <laughs> and I can cut it. And... There we go. We continue to cut the apples, then place some butter in a saute pan. Which is kind of nice. It's a good indicator to know when you're ready to add your apples. Mm -hmm. When your butter's melted. Oh, I cubed mine. That's good. <laughs> I'll have a little variety. Instead of slicing them. <laughs> We add the apples to our melted butter, then saute until soft. To prepare our pie crust, we sprinkle on a mixture of cinnamon and sugar before baking. It's gonna take between 12 and 15 minutes till it gets all brown, 400 degrees. 400 degrees. 
For the apples, we make a mixture of cinnamon, brown sugar, and fresh nutmeg. Hey, Liv, I'm not sure if you're familiar with creating mm -hmm. your own. We love to do it on yeah. our French toast. Yeah. Especially. It's it just, it's a little bit stronger than it is. stuff that you would buy, you know, in a jar that's mm -hmm. already pre-ground. The nutmeg um, seems to lose its... It really does. And uh, it just smells so good. It reminds me of Christmas. Once the apples are softened, we add in our brown sugar mixture and stir. After a few minutes, we add in a mixture of cornstarch and water to create a thick sauce. Yeah, it's starting to thicken. It doesn't take long. No, nope. less than a minute, really. Yeah. We remove our pie crust and begin assembling our deconstructed apple pie. I love the big bubbles. Yeah, those are my favorite parts. And we'll get our nice hot nice. apples, the cinnamon, and then oh, look at that. we're going to use some of this delicious local frozen <laughs> custard. <laughs> it's not ice cream. It's, it's custard. <laughs> Take a big scoop of those apples. Okay. Put them right on top. And on the side of it. Okay. Here's your piece. Then we're just gonna break off a piece of our pie crust. This is perfect for pie lovers who just don't want to spend time. a whole lot of time. It takes to make the pie. That's right. Thank you. Fork or spoon or Good. spork. <laughs> or your hands. No, that wouldn't work. <laughs> Any way you like it. But you have an apple pie start to finish. Start to finish in just a few minutes, really. I mean... That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you taste the nutmeg on the oh, yeah. apples? It's just nice. Oh, perfect and easy and quick. Thanks, Kristen. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> To find Kristen's recipe for her deconstructed apple pie, log on to our website at wagrown.com. That's it for another episode of Washington Grown. We hope you enjoyed seeing all that Washington has to offer when it comes to creating one of America's favorite desserts, the classic pie. Thanks for joining us.